boost, we decided we would take an oil sample of the engine after we've done all the NA runs, and then we'll take another oil sample after we're done doing all the boosted runs to see how much difference we see in the oil just between the engine being run NA and running on boost. So let's take this sample from the NA runs, then we can compare it and show you the results from the boosted runs. Okay, we just made a whole bunch of big boost, over 20 pounds of boost, dyno runs, making over 1,300 horsepower. Now, let's take a sample of this oil after running on big boost. Now we'll send it off to the lab and show you the results. More boost always means more fuel and the oil is showing the proof of that fact. First thing we see with these oil test results is the sample that ran on boost definitely has more fuel dilution which has lowered the viscosity of the oil. It's also raise the amount of wear. When we look at the amount of iron and copper, aluminum, so that's, you know, your iron is gonna be your cylinder bore wear. The copper is gonna be from the bushings, both in the lifter and the lifter bushings themselves, as well as the aluminum obviously is the pistons. So what we see right here is on NA, we were about 49 parts per million iron, 13 parts per million copper, 13 parts per million aluminum, everything's doing pretty good there. But when we go to the boost, that iron shoots up to 75, the copper goes up to 16, and the aluminum goes up to 18. And part of that is that loss of viscosity due to the fuel dilution. If we had not had that higher level of fuel dilution, the viscosity wouldn't have decreased, which wouldn't have increased wear. So I think we could probably change the viscosity of the oil and be able to make this work. Now, when we were running here, we were actually running the driven 5W30, you know, the break-in oil in it. So we, we did that as kind of a test for the guys at Driven to kind of see, okay, with that lower viscosity oil, how well does it handle a whole bunch of boost? And I'm gonna say right now, it actually handled it really well for that viscosity with 1300 horsepower. That's a lot of horsepower throwing at it, so I think it, it did pretty well. If you go back and look at the previous samples, when we were at a higher viscosity, that 1540 blend, those numbers were quite a bit less because there was more viscosity. So really more of a viscosity issue here. Other thing that kind of jumped out, obviously, in red, when you first look at the page, is the water. When we ran the engine previously, we didn't see those higher levels of water. Let me tell you why we didn't see a lot of water previously, but we did this time. It's all about engine operating temperature. Before we were running the engine, we hadn't been running just on Q16 the whole time. We had been running on some other fuels, but then we also were running the engine at a little bit warmer oil temperature and water temperature. What happens when you heat up water? It evaporates. What happens when it's cold? It condenses. We're seeing condensation here. Obviously, every combustion cycle is creating water, and because we were running the engine at a lower temperature to prevent detonation, by the way, uh, we didn't want to blow it up. We were trying to be safe to keep detonation from occurring. Consequence for that is that lower operating temperature created more water and we can actually see the samples were positive for water. So the boosted sample did have more water in it than the NA sample, which makes sense. Now the report just shows it's positive but it doesn't report the actual number. I saw the actual results and the actual results say there was more water 
in the boosted sample than in a sample, which again, just makes sense. More fuel means more power. That's more combustion happening. That means more water being created. So overall, these are really interesting results. And we can see that pattern from when we initially ran the engine, the very beginning when we were running NA and then added a little bit of boost, we can see the wear metals go from 28 parts per million iron up to 35, up to 63. As we were just kind of moving our way up, but then when we go to the lower viscosity oil, making that same high level of boost, now we go from 49 parts per million compared to 28 or 35. Now we're also seeing that go up because the viscosity went down. Obviously, when we go to a higher level of boost, we go from 63 to 75. So what this tells me isn't the engine's in distress, but it does tell us we need to make some changes to how we're operating the engine. We need to run the engine at a little bit warmer temperature. If we need to back some timing out of it in order to prevent detonation, that's the best way to do it because we don't want a lot of water building up in there because that's gonna cause rust and other issues. We don't want that viscosity loss. We know we need the fuel to make the power. So what do we do? We're gonna have to increase the viscosity of the oil to offset for that. Because we can basically see that as long as is the oil viscosity was around 12 to 15 centistops. That's a flow measurement. We had really low wear. It was in viscosity went below 12, which basically a 30 grade oil or lower, that's 12 centistops and down, like 12 and a half and down, is it a 30 or a 20 or a 16 or a 12 or a 8 or whatever. We really need to be in that 40 grade range. I don't think we need to go all the way to 50 because we're running this engine fairly cold. Even though we're gonna run it a little bit warmer, we're not gonna be running it hot. So we don't need to have a 50. You need enough viscosity, but not too little viscosity. If the oil is too thick, it won't flow enough and we can have piston scuffing problems and things like that. So we wanna have enough oil getting where it needs to be at the right place, at the right time, at the right amount for ours. We talk about it all the time. So I think in that 40 grade range, probably around 14, 15 centistokes is right where we need to be at 100 degrees C on this test to be able to have the right viscosity in the engine as it's running, even making boost. So that's why we do the oil analysis is we can run the engine, we can get all the data from the engine, we can take the oil sample, and we can let the engine talk to us, tell us what it likes and what it doesn't like, and we can make some changes now on how we run the engine, what oil we need to put in the engine next time to make sure we have the good performance, but also that we're reducing wear. Well, that's the fun part about oil analysis. It's science, not speculation. We can know what's going on in the engine and make changes to make it better. So you get more of me, but you get Billy this time too. Hey, it's fun. I, now, I love water vapor. <laughs> it's like this is, you don't know a lot about this, but in previous life, Scooter talks about previous life, right? Right. In a previous life, I, I really was a physicist. And <laughs> one of the things that, that we studied was, you know, when I was a kid, ozone was a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. So we had a big thing at Rhodes College on the top of the physics tower. I actually had the highest office at Rhodes just because it was on the physics tower um, on the top. But we had a, a heliostat, it's a mirror system that tracks the sun. Okay. And we're measuring the um, ozone, how much ozone absorption there was. Well, water vapor is one of these things that people don't get, that water's all out there. And all this water vapor, being from Memphis, we have tons of it. Yes. There was like only one day that whole year that had low enough humidity that I could get a good ozone test because the front had come through and knocked all the water out that day. <laughs> but normally we're just surrounded by water. And so when you do these tests, you can wind up finding out something that you just don't expect, right? Uh, absolutely. And you think in Arizona of all places, it would be very low humidity, that water wouldn't be an issue. But in this case, we're using an oxygenated fuel. Plus combustion makes water. Yeah, it's one of the byproducts of it. Like mm -hmm. people don't realize when you take octane and combine it with oxygen, you do get H2O as one of the products of, a, of combustion. Absolutely. So you're making it, and not only that is when you're putting all this fuel in, that it's cooling all of the parts of the engine. Yeah. So you've got this, this latent heat of vaporization, sucking all this temperature out of your intake manifold, out of your cylinder heads, things like that. And then all of a sudden, as soon as you hit that dew point, as soon as it gets cool enough to that dew point, any little bit of water out there will just throw your test totally off because it wants to condense on every surface. Well, the other thing too is we were totally squirrels distracted. Uh, because we had combustion uh, analysis this time, right? Yeah. So the first time you build the engine, we didn't have the cool combustion analysis. So what would you do? You'd just make dyno run, dyno run, dyno run. Just, and you, but this time around, we were so 
fascinated by the data we were getting from the combustion analysis that we're sitting here spending minutes studying the data so that the runs weren't consecutive back to back to back like they would normally be in the past. And I really believe that's the main reason why there was the water that was so positive in these oil samples this time when we didn't have it historically. Right. You know, when, when, when Ben got that Plex system and you start getting real academic level data, mm -hmm. you know, there's so much to dive in there. It's easy to make a 30 second, 20 second dyno pull and spend the next 20 minutes, 30 minutes, two hours looking at each RPM and how the engine's doing differently. Right. And you don't think about it, but that whole deal is that you're not getting, you, if you keep that engine cool, you know, I used to think when you were at Driven, I came over there, it's like, guys, I've got a product idea. You need a stand to put next to the people's engines so they can go and warm up their oil to like 230, 240 degrees. Make sure it gets past 212 to get all the water out because water's just trying to grab hold to everything in that engine until you get it up over that, you know, get it up over boiling, and then all of a sudden, you know, it gets to be your friend, right? Right. And, and the, one of the other, old, I think, takeaways from the data from this one, which I think is really important, is that, you know, oil is going to do exactly what it's designed to do unless it's acted on by one of two outside forces. One of them is temperature, and we can, we can try to mitigate that mm -hmm. through many ways. But the other one is contamination. And contamination is the one that I see in practice that does the most damage. Mm -hmm. And that's typically one of two things, fuel or water. And in this case, we got both. And boy, the, the numbers don't lie, right? When <laughs> you add fuel and water, that iron level just shot up compared to when there was just water, not fuel. I mean, it, it's, it's big. I mean, you get over here where there's not positive on water, not positive on fuel. I mean, it's literally a third of the amount of wear when you can control it better. Right. I mean, you know, we came back to this, these things that I love so much. So you get this little surface plate. Well, you, you have to realize there's just certain room on here. Mm -hmm. And when anything else other than the oil grabs hold, you know, then you're going to have problems. And that, those detergents, the water, you get everything in there. And it's just yeah. fuel and water washing your oil away right. leads to higher wear. Right. It doesn't seem there. like rocket science, does it? No, I mean, this, <laughs> it's weird. I'm trying to explain to it like it's, it, like it's complex, but no oil here bad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Really yeah. bad. Right. And like if you're going to wash your, like if you're out there working in your garage and you get oil all over your wrench, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? It's going to slip out of your hand. Right, but you've you got to clean it, right? Yes, you do. Well, you might wash it off with water. You might put it with soap and water. You might yep. spray it down with car cleaner. You might dip it in fuel, right? Yep. Exactly what we'd use to get the oil off of the tool. The tool we're getting it off we're, our cylinder wall. We're putting it onto our cylinder wall. Right, yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, but that, that's the thing. But we, we've got to put more fuel into the engine to make more power. So that's why things like operating temperature, these little things that you may not even think think about subtle changes can make a huge difference because we didn't really change we didn't change the oil we didn't change the mechanics of the engine but you could change the wear in the engine by the environmental yes yes and that's huge but again, that's why we do these things here at the engine performance expert we want to show you these little subtle tricks and tools you can use to make your engines work better and live longer and another part about contamination is you really want to keep all that water that's the coolant mm -hmm. inside the coolant passages and not so much in the combustion chamber. Yeah, that's or really, in the oil you pan. know, it always wants to go where it's least beneficial. So, you know, <laughs> kind of keep it there, you know, and that's where you get finish of the deck, good gaskets, you know, these multi layer gaskets these days are so good. You know, there's a lot of different options there. You know, try to keep your coolant where it needs to be, you know, and things that you don't think that hurt you, if it, you know, rust, washing off the surface. There's a thousand things that water, guy call, just keep it out of there. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why we have our buddy Chuck Lynch is going to talk to you about surface finish and gaskets. What a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. He told us 
Don't Stop Cars. We are not